Welcome, welcome again to another edition of Hashtag Celebrity. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we've had an overwhelming response, comments, questions. Well, some people are saying mm -hmm, other things, but your comments are more than welcome. Thank you so much for staying, staying tuned in. We're here again um, this Thursday at 263 Africa TV, hosting Hashtag Celebrity. We're here with a special guest. I know all of you were asking who's on this week. It was a bit of a surprise. We'll have him in a moment, and he's bringing lots of laughter and fun. You're gonna have fun, I promise you that. <laughs> but um, just yesterday, I had a couple of young people come up to me last night who were at um, some show. They came, to, came up to me and they were quite excited about Hashtag Celebrity, but they wanted to know what it was all about. I realized that a lot of you may not really understand what Hashtag Celebrity is about. Let me explain it. We're here to celebrate the talent on the continent. All our celebrities, we'll bring them to you so that you can get to know them, understand who they are, what they're doing, where they're going, and really truly celebrate our own gifted people. That's the purpose of this show. So thank you for, uh, for, for being tuned in this week. So today, we're here with Long John. I asked him, why did they call him Long John? <laughs> we shall find, find out today. And they also call him the village boy. Have a look at what he has done. He'll be on set in a moment. We'll be back. Hey, how are you guys doing? You guys are great? Yeah. Awesome. So I'm from Zimbabwe, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> No, 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 I ran away, I ran away from Zimbabwe. I'm able to be here, I'm able to be South Africa, man. I love, I love, I love South Africa, it's so amazing. Every time I went to a Zimbabwe, that you're going to South Africa, they always say, be careful, you may get mugged in Johannesburg. That is bullshit. So yesterday, I walked around Johannesburg with my wallet up in the air, just to prove them wrong. So I was mugged, I was actually, um, no one told me everything, no one told me anything. Are you, are you guys a couple right there? You guys a couple? Where are you from? You're from Zimbabwe! Wow, wow, this is beautiful. I just want to personally thank you know, Indian people for donating their hair to black women of Zimbabwe. Thank you very much, Indian people. We appreciate those donations. Woo! I mean, look at it, she looks amazing. <laughs> is, is that yours? Is that your real hair? Did you, did you see that? Did you see that? She's like, this is my hair, John. It's mine, all of it. I have the receipt, so leave me alone, okay? <laughs> you know, I, I love these waves, I think it's beautiful, you know. But you know, we, black women always want to hide these waves from us. You, can, you cannot talk about it as a man. You know, because they, you see the way they scratch, they do this. If you, if you, if you see women do this, you've seen this, right? Just scratch. Just scratch. This is why I like my older Zimbabwean women, because they don't care. When they scratch their heads, they scratch like it's the middle of the world. This is the woman who was trying to talk to me after the show, she was scratching her head, the weave was coming off. She kept going like, oh, John, tell me something, you're so funny, it's night, yeah? I love your jokes, John. <laughs> I think it was actually kind of hot that day, she's like, John, tell me something, you know what? <laughs> you're so funny, you have no idea. <laughs> I think it's beautiful, so you think it's beautiful. But they kind of freak me out, because I, I don't know where they come from, really. Because I bought my girlfriend Indian weave, it was written Indian weave. Why the corner of the box there, it was written made in China. I'm like, wait a minute, this is... This does not work, man, this does not work. I, I think it's beautiful, you know, I think it's beautiful. But anyway, I, I, I come from Zimbabwe, I come from a small town in Zimbabwe called Chimani Mani. Assuming that you guys don't know where Chimani Mani is, let me give you some directions. You see, you go to Zimbabwe, and you go to the capital city of, of Zimbabwe called Harare. Go north of Harare, keep going, keep going. If you reach a nice little town with nice little buildings, you are lost. You have to come back because that's what takes you. It's very small. You never find it. You never. It's very, very small. To find it, you need to go in the afternoon with a flashlight just to find that town. It's very small. This town is small, ladies and gentlemen. If you are driving in Shimani Mani, you don't even need to use signals because everybody knows where you're going. I'm just going there and I'm coming back. That is Shimani for me. That is where I come from. You know, but everything is slow in Shimani Mani. Internet, ha, oh, so slow. We are still waiting for the 2010 World Cup results, ladies and gentlemen. They are still downloading right now. They are... You cannot even watch porn on the internet. It always buffers all the time. Just imagine a nice thing, you know, there's always a dumb lady, you know, she's always be like, Hi, my name is Jemima. I'm 18 years old. 
I've been in the porn industry for 25 years. Yeah, I would like to take off my bra. Bra and my. I grew up watching porn like this. Now I'm in bed with my girlfriend, I'm doing my thing, and then I stop like, what are you doing? I'm like, baby, I'm just buffering. Wait a minute. I love Chimani money, man. I love Chimani money. I, I like when you travel to countries like South Africa. Internet is fast. Amazing. It's amazing. But the only annoying thing are the pop-ups, you know. Annoying. Every time. Like, this is the day I'm watching porn. Okay, I watch porn. Fuck, fuck you. Okay. So I'm watching. I'm alone. I'm, I'm happy. I'm alone. I'm alone in the dark. I'm, I'm excited. I'm watching it. And all of a sudden, there was a pop-up like, God is watching over you. Wait a minute. This is slow. Just don't watch now. Please, don't. Welcome back. Um, that was a bit, uh, well, a show of a bit of Long John and one of his performances. He'll tell us about it in a moment. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we have our crowd from the UK, from the USA, South Africa, Zambia, Mozambique, Congo, um, Australia. Welcome on board. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're here with the comedian. He promises that he's going to make us laugh. Long John. Whoa. <laughs> It's a free show today. Ah. <laughs> 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 Welcome, Bongjo. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Now, tell us, I want to know. I don't know if the crowd wants to know. Yeah. I want to know. Okay. Why do they call you Long John? Well, <laughs> the thing is, I didn't give myself this name, Long John. Okay. So it was given to me by my friends and my cousins. First of all, my grandfather's name is John. So I look like my grandfather, okay. and even the way I do things, my grandfather, mm. they used to call me John, mm. and I'm tall. Okay. So they called me Long John. So from there, it just, just, just came Long John in my stage name, so I was like, let me just, that let me just use this on stage now. Okay. So what you think? <laughs> is that innocent? It's not what you think. <laughs> <laughs> and why do they call you Village Boy? Well, I grew up in a small village, uh, years ago, which my mind. Yeah. That's where I grew up. So, uh, it's a village boy, so everything that I do, you know, I, I always talk about the village and where I travel with the village boy point of view. Okay. So that's why they call me the village boy. So, which name do you prefer? Which one is, which name do you use when? Village boy? No, Long John? the village boy is a woman show. It's a show that I've been working on for like two years now. Now it's ready, so that's why I'm doing a tour and stuff like that. Okay. So, Long John is my stage name, but the village boy is, is, a, is the, that I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. Well, now that we know why it's called Long John, maybe she looks like now yeah. that we know at least. <laughs> I was hoping for some drama, some. There's no drama. There's no drama. Mm -hmm. So what you think, guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. Who's who's Long John? What's your real name, actually? <laughs> Shh. Okay. <laughs> you you know Zimbabweans. They wanna give their kids names that mean something. You know, names that, like when you give your name a kid, right? They want to give you a name that you know, tells you what to do in life. Mm -hmm. So my grandparents wanted to give me a name that reminded me to learn in school. So they named me Len Mo. Okay. That is actually my name, <laughs> Len Mo. What's your full name? Your last name? My name is Ndao. Okay. From, you know, Ndao. Chimani Mani. Chimani is in Montari. Yes, past Montari and uh, Chipinge. In Zimbabwe. Not Mozambique. Not Mozambique. So tell us about you. Tell us more about you. Who are you? Well, uh, yeah, like, I, I, I'm just a village boy with a dream. Mm -hmm. so, like, I've always wanted to be a stand up comedian when I was growing up. Even my grandparents knew I was going to be a stand up comedian. I remember, I remember uh, when I finished high school, I told my grand grandmother that I want to be a comedian. And she gave me money to come into her life and actually do comedy. Maybe she made sure that she supports me, right? Okay. Or, because she, or maybe she just wanted me to go out. <laughs> Your please, minister. please go now, please, yeah, yeah. Now we are grown up, please go. But that's me, you know. And I'm a comedian and I love it. Okay, and when did you start officially doing comedy? How was that journey? Well, in, I started in school. Like, when I was in school, I used to do uh, drama, which was funny, it was always comedy. 
I used to do speeches on stage yeah, on, on, on the assembly. Teachers used to know me, I used to make fun of teachers and stuff like that. But officially, I, I started in 2012, right? 2012, at Book Cafe, uh, it was still open. And that was like the worst performance of my life. I don't want to lie. I was booed, okay? A guy threw a chair on stage. Do you know how boring you are? <laughs> A guy to give up a chair. I don't want to sit anymore. I'm doing a chair. It was that bad. It was annoying. But I kept on coming back. Okay. I kept on coming back. You didn't give up. I didn't give up. I kept on, I kept on doing it. I kept on doing it. That's comedy. You need to keep doing it. No matter what. Okay. Alright. Yeah. And I mean, do the girls like it? I mean, who, who doesn't like a guy who makes a laugh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused though sometimes because, first of all, uh, yes, girls will be like, oh, this guy is funny. So they, they don't understand that you're not funny all the time. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, we go on stage, yes, I make you laugh and stuff like that. But I'm, be, behind the stage, I'm also a person. I also have troubles, you know, I also have, you know, I also have stresses like everybody else. You also so, want someone to make you laugh. Yeah, I also want someone to make me laugh. So I don't know if girls are falling in love with the jokes <laughs> or me. So that, I don't know, you see. I'm also a person. But I gotta say, you know, yeah, girls love it. I'm backstage, I'm like, oh my god, you're so funny! <laughs> I'm this! You are so funny. You're so funny! <laughs> <laughs> and then, are you in any form of relationship? Okay. No. Any ship? Any kind of ship? Uh, friendship. <laughs> friendship. Friendship. Nah, I'm not in some kind of relationship, if you wanna say. But the thing is, it's tough to be in a relationship when you're a traveling comic, I think, because okay. I do a lot of traveling, so you're not in one place, you're at different places every time, so long distance. So women don't like long distance relationships. So yeah, sometimes it's just I'm married to my comedy. Okay. <laughs> okay. The boy is taken by comedy. Come on. Come on. Sorry. Sorry. He's taken. Gone. Gone. Sorry, guys. You like to put a ring on his Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> just waiting for comedy. <laughs> yeah, that's, a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. But so tell us about your journey. Um, some of the, your challenges. Yeah, the most painful challenges of the journey. Yeah, besides being booed on the stage. Well, yeah, that was that was because yeah. uh, first of all, when, when you when you're a new comedian, you don't know that comedy there's more to just jokes. Comedy is big. Like it teaches you a lot. Like discipline. You know, it teaches you uh, persistence, you know, and even when you research, you learn a lot through comedy, even life itself, you learn life from comedy. So I didn't know that, you see. So, so when I was coming from the village, I thought, yeah, I'm just going on stage, you know, and, you know, <laughs> one, two jokes, and then, ah, now it's lit. Even, even you know, when I was in the showers, I was cracking jokes, and I was, I was killing it. <laughs> and I was killing it. And then now it didn't happen like that, you know. So that was the first one. And the second one was always to, like, I'm always in, in, in a new place every time, you see. And um, I, I don't know anyone. Like, when I, when I go to, like, when I was in Zambia, I was alone. Okay. So it's lonely sometimes. Okay. It's lonely. Right. And you have to perform for over different people every time, different audiences, colored, Indian, black, white, every time. Okay. See? So that's tough. So you have to just uh, adjust. And that's tough, you see. And um, there's a lot. There's a lot, yeah. And considering that you have to appeal to different crowds, how yeah. do you manage that? Yes. How do you... You have to know your audience, okay. that's the thing. You have to, before you perform, you have to just research on your audience mm -hmm. and just, um, like, when I was going to Zambia, I, I went on Google, I Googled Zambia and what was been happening, and then cholera. Mm -hmm. That was my first job. <laughs> right there. Oh, like, okay, this is what happened. The guy introduced me on stage. Then this local, Long John, the village boy, I went on stage and I had you know, hand sanitizer. So I just couldn't hand sanitizer. I was like, yeah, there's cool that here, guys. You never know. <laughs> you see, so that's that's what you need to do when okay. you know research, you know your audience. Alright, so what inspires the script? Well, well, it's things are on. And you script it? Do you script your jokes or do yeah. you just come off like this? No, some, some come on stage, but some you just you script it. Mm -hmm. Like when I was writing the film, I gave myself like two years because mm -hmm. I wanted to write material that's, that's global material, material that I can perform anywhere, mm -hmm. in, in, in anywhere in Chinese people I can perform and they will love. You see, mm -hmm. that's what I did. So I script it, but when you're on stage now, you just, whatever happens, yeah. when, when someone is laughing so hard, you make fun of them. And if it connects to a certain job, connect it, and then it's just having fun, okay. you see. Mm -hmm. 
So my comedy comes from things around me, my point of view, how I was raised, you know, people around me, stuff like that. So that's that's me. And with some of your achievements, what are your highest points? Yeah, I I recently opened for Benny Hilton on his live series performance. That was that was huge. It was hosted one of the biggest uh, theaters in Johannesburg, Gorgeous City. It was amazing. It was sold out two nights, beautiful. And I recently performed at uh, Mzansi Magic. I was actually at Mzansi Magic comedy thingy yesterday. It was finale, but I was just popping up. But I performed there. It was, that, was, that was good. That was huge also. And I've been doing, I've managed to penetrate into the South African industry, mm -hmm. which is always a dream of mine. I'm performing, I'm touring around the world, which is great. So, yeah. Family. Okay, so Long John is a big name in South Africa. He's made headways. Um, so I really <laughs> it's true, it's true. It's just been Long John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I really know how. I want to know how did you make it in South Africa, uh, as opposed to Zimbabwe or opposed to another country? How? Well, I, <clears throat> the thing is, I was raised my grandmother. My grandmother, she's very persistent. Yes. She read. She she. She, she told me when I was growing up, she always had this lesson, like if if you want something, just no matter what, just go. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. No matter what happens, no matter what people say, go for it. Wow. Say, always set a goal and then work your way towards the goal. Right. That's how I was raised. So, so yeah. South Africa was your choice. South Africa was my choice. Because the thing is, for me, um, I have bigger dreams. Yes. South Africa, yes. For me, it's like playing ground. I want to, I'm just learning, yes. you know, the industry, how it works, and meeting a lot of people, you know, opportunities. That's what I'm doing. But I'm passing by. Mm -hmm. See, I have uh, bigger dreams. Yes. Why well, what are those big dreams? Yeah, <laughs> yes, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's some other, it's some other time. Okay. <laughs> you keep his dreams to yourself. Exactly. We'll follow up with him. Just follow. We'll just follow. follow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you did something, I, I've been um, keeping tabs on you. I, 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 no, I'm not stalking you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you make me laugh. You make me laugh. Just like 1992, 1993, just going down the wall. <laughs> so, I just need someone to make me laugh too. <laughs> okay, so I've been watching. You've, you've got um, a show going on. I don't know what's going on with Zazi. With Zazi. Yeah. What is that all about? The Mzansi in Magic. Yes, you've been there a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, uh, when you perform in South Africa, right, people are watching. Mm -hmm. That's the thing you do. People are always watching, so you never know where you're performing for. Yeah. So what happened is, I was trying, I was trying out my material, and it's like new material night in, in Johannesburg, and some guy approached me after my performance. He's like, oh, would you like to feature into the Mzansi Magic comedy? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I would love to. So I did, I featured Thomas Moore was there, even Big names was also performing, performing there. Mm -hmm. So they recorded us. So now, uh, next season, I'm hopefully I'll be there also. Okay. So it's like a working relationship, you see. So every time, whenever I have like, new material, I just go there and perform. Yeah. And how has it been penetrating the market, considering that, I mean, you've got big names like that? Yeah. Very you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, you, as a comedian, yeah, you can achieve a lot of things, but you just have to know that you have to be humble. Okay. See, people like that, you mm -hmm. see. Just be humble, no matter what. Uh, first of all, Barry Hilton liked that, you mm -hmm. see, because when you met Barry Hilton, now I was asking questions that can you know, build my career also, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, ah, this guy wants to learn mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll take you with me and whenever you want to open for me, yeah, you can. Okay. So it's always about being humble and being persistent mm -hmm. and uh, networking. Networking plays a big role in common, in anything actually. Yeah. Arts, you have to network with people. When you meet someone, I can have your number. What, you, what do you do? And then network with them, and then you see you have a working relationship. So that's what I do. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So moving a bit away from your career. Okay. <laughs> now, here we go. And I'm asking you this because you're coming from South Africa, okay. from Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. We we really truly want to send our condolences to the Mandela family for yeah. the loss of um, Mama Winnie. She really was the mother of the nation. Um, but recently, um, Julius Malema came out and made a statement yeah. saying that um, she should have been the president of, of South Africa and the ANC. How do you feel about that? So for Sarah, what is your thoughts around Winnie Mandela? Being, she's, she's, she's well known, but how? Yeah. what are your thoughts around her and, and Judith Malema's statement? 
Okay, uh, first, first of all, yeah, I'd like to pay my condolences also to the family of Mandela and um, and yeah, this is a this is a loss, like a national loss, right? Because Mandela Mandela was, was like a beacon of hope, right? And um, Julius came on and said uh, she should be the president, right? But why now? <laughs> why why didn't you say it when she was alive? You see, for me, I feel like it was kind of like um like a campaigning, you know, uh, strategy or something. That's what I think. Yeah, of course, she should be the she, she was she was great, you know. She stood by, you know, and she represented, you know, you know, or the nation, you know, she gave hope to the people. But I believe uh, Julius Malema is just saying that because you know she she's not around anymore. She's just not nice. It's like black people. I don't know what's wrong with black people. Black people are scared of like when someone dies. That's why people are like, "Hi, oh, such a nice person." But it's still on TV, okay? That's what's happening here. You see, that's what I think is happening right okay. here. But yeah, okay. I think she she was she was you know one of those people that was supposed to be you know you know. That was supposed to have been exactly. high and mighty and we would have made it. Was, and do you think that she's her legacy enables more women to stand up? Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. That? Definitely because she had a voice, you know, she represented, you know, a vulnerable. Yes. You see. That's why I believe that, you know, she's just this beacon of all. And yeah, okay. I believe that. Alright. Okay, so coming back again to you. Okay. <laughs> <Ta-da>. <laughs> <laughs> do you share your chocolate jokes? <laughs> oh, so you want me to well, every, every time, every time when I, when I come here, people are going to say, Hey, can you tell us jokes? I mean, love, I, I, I don't mean, have to stalk you. Cool. <laughs> I don't have, at least for, for, for a couple of days, I don't <laughs> have to stalk you. <laughs> no, the thing is, first of all, comedy is hard. You have to know comedy is that every time when you meet someone, they will say, Oh my god, tell me a joke. Oh my god. It's like a guy came to me and said, Hey, dude, can you tell me a joke? Just a little bit. I'm like, No, just a little bit. I'm like, No, just a little bit. I'm like, okay, what if you do your job right now and I also tell you a joke afterwards? <laughs> so he wrote me actually. He wrote me as he was a robot. So yes, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and the question that you asked, uh, can you be in a relationship? Yeah. It's, it's tough to be in a relationship as a comedian, you see. Because first of all, women don't take you seriously. Really? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. Oh my god, I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also tried to date a white girl. It's different dating a white girl and a black girl. It's different when you break up. You know this? Why do you mean black people be like, I'm going, okay, I'm leaving. Bye bye. I picked all my stuff in my car and I'm going. Bye bye. And then she goes, right? Yeah. Black people now, same scenario. Yeah. I'm going, okay, I picked all my stuff and I'm going. Bye bye. Okay, can I have my friend here? <laughs> No, can I come in? <laughs> Different! Yeah. Okay. And then, get out, I can go on and on. <laughs> you have to go on. <laughs> Two more minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I need to be. It's not a I know you can see that I have a busy eye, guys. I have a busy eye, and it's tough, you know, because it's not a day my girlfriend came to me and said, like, John! I want you to look me straight in my eyes and tell me that you love me. I'm like, I love you. It's like, no, you know, why are you looking at this guy? But no, I'm looking at you. Like, John, I want you to prove it right now that you're talking to me. And I swear my right eye was looking at you. And my left eye was looking for you. So I'm trying so hard. So she left. Because you see eye to eye. That's why you're not in a relationship. Yeah, that's why I'm not in a relationship. I don't see eye to eye with women. So that's what's happening. <laughs> Alright, do we have we having any of this anytime soon? I know you have a show coming up. Tell us about that. Oh yeah, the thing is, well, I, I want to talk about the village boy. I, yes, I, 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 I want to talk about the village boy. People have been asking me, what, what is the village boy? Well, it's two things. First of all, the village boy is the one minute show that I've been working on. Uh, it talks about uh, my journey as a comedian, right? right. It talks about um, how I grew up in the village. Uh, as a village boy, you see, just about how I was raised, my grandparents and stuff like that. Mm. You know? And it, it's also the village boy, also a brand that I've been working on because when I was being raised, my grandparents they always helped people. Yes. They've always they helped people around me. You see, like every time they see someone in the streets, they always try and help them. You know, like when, when I was growing up, I remember uh, we used to, I did, we used to have like a, like a, someone coming to stay with us, not not, not not our relative or anything, but they just just. To, used to like pay school fees for that person, go to school and stuff like that. So I grew up 
wanted to just give back to people, you know, and just helping people. So the village boy uh, is, is part of that. You know, so I want to help out people, you know, uh, like uh, right now we are hosting this show and we're doing a new guest, uh, yeah, football team, Nutra Tigers, you know, because this guy, Mr. Philip Jenny, has been trying to, to help out kids, you know, under, you know, under 18 kids, you know, mm-hmm. and get them out of the street, you know, and uh, train them football and discipline. So they don't have equipment, but it does it for free. But they don't have equipment to train out, you know, they only have one ball. So I was like, you know, let me just help out, you know, host a show at Pakare Pie and uh, all everything that we get at the show we buy equipment for them and you know and it doesn't end there. And it's my money we have kids that that's uh, so many so much potential in school but they cannot afford to pay to buy school but pay school fees, uniform and stuff like that. So we will also help out. See, so that, that is the village boy giving a laugh, touching your life. Yes. Yeah. Okay, for more information, we have our poster up here. Um, the show is when? <laughs> it's on Saturday, uh, 7 April. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, um, he, it's his way of giving back to the community. Yeah. Um, he, how did you identify why the soccer team, why, why this particular, these kids? Um, yeah, because first, first of all, um, this team was founded by one of my one of the people that helped me. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in, when I was here now, I remember. I remember like, I, I had a team that I have, right? Yes. And um, uh, right, right, right now, where I'm staying right now, mm-hmm. yeah, the guy, what's his name? Uh, Mister Gon. Mm-hmm. Mister Gon. Yeah, he found the team, and he's always wanted to, you know, to to help these guys, you know, but he didn't have money to do it. Okay. So, so this guy I know him way back. So uh, when the coach approached us. He was just saying it in person, uh-huh. like, you know, we don't have money. So that clicked into me, like, you know what, I can't help these guys. They're close, they're right here around us, and they're helping the community. Mm-hmm. Let's just help them. And then after that, we will go further, you know, build it up. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, so, you, I mean, you are with other comedians. Yes, yes, I'm participating. Yes, and, and there are actually more comedians coming out, you know, because this is not about me. Mm-hmm. This is about this team. So more comedians want to come out and, you know, you know just, you know, Give it up, you see. So, so and, those, and those that want to help, those that want to donate, are you accepting any donations? Yes, you can accept any donations. <clears throat> anything, even Eagle Cash or anything. You can even Eagle Cash uh, anything on um, 077 8828 uh, Just send uh, your, your name and everything. And we really appreciate anything we will do. Well, he's given you his phone number, girls. <laughs> no! No! Eagle Cash! Eagle Cash! But, yeah. So, um, Ask you the question. Who dressed you? Oh yeah, this designer you can find him. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? Kotamai. Vegan uh, Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Great. To love him too, right here. Those that don't know what that is, you need to come to Zimbabwe mm-hmm. and go to into town. So you will know. Because that you've donated, you're not buying them again. <laughs> so we have accept. Thank you very much for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as a token of appreciation, um, we really um, want to thank him for coming on board and really so- celebrate your talent. You've done so much, and you really, you are really flying the flag of Zimbabwe and Africa high. Well done and great job. So as a token of appreciation, we want to give you a little something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <That> is mine. <laughs> Stay here. <laughs> Talking <laughs> This is a sponsored gift in partnership with 263 Africa TV from 1842. Um, they are gift givers. They have the most splendid gifts. Nice. So they also believe in our vision and believe in your talent. So they, they decide to partner with us to give you a special gift. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> It's nice. It is nice. <laughs> wow. You'll always remember. Thank you very much. I'll always remember. <laughs> <laughs> <Stop her. laughs> oh, thank you very much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. This is great. We look forward to seeing you again. We'll get you we'll get him on show. Um for those of you that sent your comments, we'll follow forward them to him. If you have any questions, we'll forward it to him. 
and he'll respond personally. Um, thank you so much for joining us in this episode. We will be back again next week with a special guest. So stay locked in to know who we're featuring. Follow us on all our social media. Facebook is um, 263 Africa Media. Instagram, Twitter is TV263. And catch us every day. We're always making noise, always doing something, celebrating something, somewhere with someone. We'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us.